Welcome back to Devotions. We are just a few days away from At the Movies at First Christian Church, which means that you still have a few days to hand those invitation cards to friends, family members, and neighbors and coworkers who might need an opportunity to come and see. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking about Jesus, but from a slightly different illustration as we use a Hollywood movie, I'm not going to tell you which one, to share biblical truth this Sunday. And there's free popcorn for everybody. And it's going to be great. And I'm excited if you can't tell. If you haven't yet, make sure that you click on like and share uh, those buttons if you're watching on Facebook and get uh, these devos out for other people to, to join us and so they can see as well. Well, very intentionally, we talked about invitation that was offered by the master of the house during Jesus' parable of the great banquet on Sunday. The, the parable shows up in a couple of different places in Scripture, but we looked specifically at Luke's gospel. And in Luke's retelling of the story... We capture the angst that the master had to fill his house to make sure that every seat at the table was full. Uh, he wanted his servants to go further and further out, further out, further out, further out to invite people to come. It's a call for his church to be full of people who will invest and invite and invest and invite so that more people can come and, and more people can have better lives. And we also talked on Sunday about the efforts of Jesus to invest in the life of the woman at the well that led to her action of invitation that followed. John chapter 4 records the encounter uh, of the woman at the well. And Jesus has a conversation with a woman who has come to the well by herself in the middle of the day, which tells us right off the bat some things about her. Culturally, this tells us uh, that she was a bit of an outsider that she was a bit ashamed or maybe just distant in her whole situation in life from all the other women in the community. She's had five husbands. She's now living with a guy who's not her husband, and it's a, 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 she's a bit of a loner. But her conversation with Jesus, though a little contentious at times, leads her to a new spirit, a new outlook, a brand new way to see hope and truth and grace. And at that, she runs to town to tell people who don't think much of her that they should just come and see what she has found. Come and see, she said. And the people did. There was enough excitement and enough enthusiasm in her voice and in her actions to want to experience whatever it is that she had experienced. But the, there's a portion of this story in John chapter 4 that we, we tend to miss. We kind of quit too soon on the story. Once the people had been invited to come and see Jesus, it says that many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony, okay? Her invita invitation made an effect, had an effect on them. But the effect was actually from Jesus. And they, they didn't hang with Jesus for just like a second or two, just for a moment. It says, so when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Now, the disciples, they didn't even really want to go through Samaria but Jesus kind of forced the issues, and it turns out now that people needed Jesus there, and he stayed for two full days beyond that, and the depth of belief was significant. The Samaritan's explanation, we no longer believe just because of what you said, the woman. Now we have heard for ourselves and know this man really is the Savior of the world. She just invited. Okay, She said, come and see. And God took that meager invitation to extend Jesus' stay so that a movement of belief spread throughout the town. It was just an invitation for people to hear, for more people to listen, for more people to know the truth. And we may think that no one wants to hear or that no one's interested in truth anymore. Was that not the same feeling that the disciples had about Samaria? I mean, why are we staying here? Why should we even go through here? And, and look what happened. May we be more like the woman who regardless of what she thought people might think of her, she was willing to just simply say, come and see. And that invitation to come and see led to you know, 48 hours of Jesus in Samaria that most likely changed the eternity for an entire village. It's just something for us to consider when we think that, hey, I, I've probably done everything I can do and I've probably connected with as many people as I'm going to connect with and our church still has a lot of people in it and that's probably good enough. This woman made an invitation, and that invitation changed an entire uh, community right there in Samaria. Let's pray. God, thanks for, for your stories that we read, the parables that we read, 
from Jesus, but the stories that we read from encounters that Jesus had with people. And God, we are just um, amazed at uh, the, the stories that we read where we see the, the, the person of Jesus and the grace of Jesus transform a life. And sometimes we think that those are just fairy tales or we regard them as past stories that wouldn't work the same anymore, but they will. We just have lost confidence or we've listened to too many social media feeds or too many um, negative comments along the way in our own life to think that um, the name of Jesus and the truth of Jesus is just as transformational as it's ever been. And yet if we will listen, God, we will hear just as many stories happening right now as has ever happened before. So would you be with us as we seek for the, the courage and the strength to make those invitations, to simply say, come and see, and to then allow you, the one who truly transforms lives, to go to work with the actions that we put forward. God, we, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for this Sunday coming up and the next few weeks ahead. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Okay, just a reminder, one more time, at the movies happens Sunday. It's great that you're going to come. I hope that you will. But it's also a great time to invite friends of all ages uh, to come. Uh, this is going to be a special year for At The Movies because I have a pretty good feeling that the, the vast majority of the people who are sitting in the seats have seen all of the different films that we're showing this year, but they're going to hear them from a different perspective, from a, a place that says, hey, here, here's some unbelievable big, biblical truth that was hiding in the weeds uh, amidst these Hollywood films. So make sure that you... Uh, Take your card, hand that out to somebody this week. If you need more, we've got more sitting on the desk ready for you for this week that you can hand out in the week ahead. Uh, don't forget, also on the back, it lists a lot of other things, one of which is Saturday night at the movies. And you can go to our website or to the app or to um, uh, your weekend update that's going to come tomorrow in your email box to find out how you can sign up and how you can register yourself and a friend to come to Saturday night at the movies where we're showing the uh, back to the Future Sermon at Crown Point. We hope that you'll take advantage of that too. And we can't wait to see you on Sunday, 9.30 and 11 o'clock and 11 o'clock online. And we will be showing the film live online, but it will not be there for recording. So just know that. We can't wait to be with you. Have a great rest of the week.